Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to video part number nine of the DFO 32 build series. If you are looking for a great way to assemble your DFO 32 kit or transfer this knowledge to your own project that you're working on, then this video is for you. If you stay to the end, you will learn what kind of phone adhesive I would be using and in the order of assembly of this kit, which can also be applied to most other kits as well. And lastly, I'll be narrating overall recommendations as we step through the procedure. So we will continue with the wing assembly. And here we are. We are going to work with the left wing. And in this step, we're going to glue on the winglet, the left winglet to the left wing. You can tell this is the left wing because the trailing edge pointed by my right hand is to the top and the leading edge is to the bottom of the screen. So guys, make sure you do a dry fit, a quick dry fit first prior to applying the adhesive. So that's what I'm doing here just to make sure it's sliding in correctly. There's no abnormal resistance abnormal angles there's it should fit and it should look like it's flush with um the control surface should be flush with the uh, surface of the winglet and um, nothing should be standing out abnormally so once that's done just repeat for the other side of the wing so this time we're doing the right wing and the dry fit has already been established and now we are um, putting it together so here I'm not doing it here but what I would recommend is putting some masking tape just to hold it um, but of course here I'm spreading a little bit of the foam safe rubber cement um, comes on the white toothpaste glue tube I'm sure all of you guys have seen it before. All of you guys have many of these. Um, if you've been in the hobby long enough, I'm sure you've collected some over the years. Now, over here, we're going to be taking a look at the fuselage and putting it together. So we're starting with the right half. Um, the bottom side is pointed up. You can tell because there's a... Uh, uh, half dome if you will that's pointed up that's actually the bottom side of the aircraft where the intake is the bottom of the intake so here I'm just using the same um, tube glue the rubber cement foam safe glue uh, <clears throat> to, to smear things around okay just use a a coffee stick a toothpick or, or q-tip if you will just eh, not really a q-tip but the cotton the, the cotton ball kind of makes things a little messy and it gets drenched and it kind of trails all over the place. I would just recommend using a coffee stick, a stir stick, or, or, or a toothpick or whatever, something similar to that. And just kind of spread the glue around, okay? Any contact points on the foam that needs to, you know, fit together or glue together, seam together, you want to make sure you get all those areas on the foam, all right? So that's the key. Over here, um, while we're on the topic, this half dome thing, well, that's actually the hand grip for the uh, hand launching. When you hand launch, it's intended for the hand grip for those who decide to hand launch this aircraft. But the problem is the location of this hand grip is wrong, okay? It's just wrong. It's, first of all, it's on the bottom side of the aircraft in conjunction with that it's behind the center of gravity what will happen when you do attempt to launch the aircraft this way by grabbing onto this handle area is the nose will immediately pitch up and because it does not have any airspeed you're hand tossing it it will just stall and crash so to avoid that I recommend holding the nose from the top side and underhanding it, or you can bungee launch it. Okay. Um, 
Otherwise, you could try dropping it off a cliff. If you're flying off a cliff, you don't really need a hand toy. You just drop it off a cliff, and it'll pick up its airspeed and find its way. And when it does, you can gain control as it's falling. But、um, that's kind of the situation I'm in right now. So I just grab onto the vertical stab, and but the vertical stab is really secured onto the fuselage because the weight of the fuselage and you're hanging, you're holding the aircraft by the vertical stab standalone. You want to make sure it's the vertical stab and the fuselage is fused together really well with glue. Okay. So,、um, but. Really, what I do is I I bungee launch my my model. So、um, I'll probably go over、uh, the bungee launching mechanism in the later videos of this build series. So I won't go into that in this in this part, which is part nine. We'll just concentrate on.、Um, Facilitating the topics that are local to this video clip here. So、um, now that we're done、uh, spreading around the glue on one half of the fuselage, you can take the other half and line it up with the spar and、um, sandwich the two pieces together. Okay, and when you do that, you basically、uh, let it sit for. 24 hours, especially if you're using Gorilla Glue, it needs time to cure. Now, just taking a step back, guys, the reason I spread the glue around instead of just dumping the glue on, don't do that. I mean, you'd be tempted to just take the Gorilla Glue and just kind of, even if you're careful dumping it on.、Uh, the thing is, the Gorilla Glue is hard to control. It's really hard to control in quantities that. Um, are typically what may seem to be desired, but more often times than not, you're gonna it's gonna get all over the place, right? It's gonna drip everywhere. It's gonna leak everywhere. It's it's gonna essentially ooze its way through cracks that you didn't know exists, and it's just gonna get all over the place. So my suggestion is just to use a wooden、uh, toothpick. Or a、uh, coffee stick to to spread it around because the glue does expand. All right, the glue does expand. So here I'm showing the nose cone of the model.、Um, over here, we are going to be、um, gluing the nose cone on. Okay,、uh, there is a situation that I am up against with.、Um, At the field I'm flying, is the nose cone gets damaged fairly easily, as does the hand grip, because the hand grip is the lowest point of the aircraft, and the nose cone is the max point of the aircraft、uh, forward. So when it's when you're belly landing, you're bound to hit something. So a rock, okay, on landing, no matter how soft you put it in, you're 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 it's it's just gonna get the, get all scratched up. So there's this thing that I got off of Amazon. You guys may have heard about it. It's called the polymorph plastic pellet hand moldable plastic、uh, kit. So these are, you know, little white pellets. You could submerge them in hot water. Just use logic and just kind of get a gut feeling of how much material you'll need. And you can make anything out of it, right? You can make a helmet. You can make a A, a necklace you can make, whatever you want. You can make、um, a ball out of it. In this case, in my case, I'll make a nose cone to protect the stock nose,、uh, the nose cone, and it's removable. So if I'm flying on a grass field where the the the, the surface is friendly to the airframe, then I won't need it. I can just take it off, and I can have the ori original look. Or a customized look, but in the case I'm landing in a、uh, unfriendly terrain, you know, I'll put the protective gear on. Okay, so that's pretty much the full details of that, and I'll go over. I'll show you guys what that is. If you guys want to check out one of my videos, it's called "My Favorite Identical RC Airplanes." It's released in 2002, I think, around Christmas Day. 
so I'll, I'll have the link in the description box as I will have the link to the um, polymorph plastic in the description box as well. So um, if you guys are up to it, feel free and um, check it out and ask questions. Leave a comment below and let me know how that works for you. Um, you can get creative with, uh, with the polymorph material. Okay. So we will continue with the wing assembly and here we are we are going to work with the left wing and in this step we're gonna glue on the winglet the left winglet to the left wing you can tell this is a left okay so make sure um, the battery tray is actually uh, installed into the fuselage as you can see here um, I left that part out, so that's why I sort of had to remove the nose cone while the glue hasn't set yet. And I just open it slightly enough that you can snug in the uh, wooden battery tray. Okay, don't forget that because that is an important component. The Velcro that you see there underneath my left arm uh, that's provided in the kit and that secures your battery. All right. So uh, once the battery's tray is correctly installed, then go ahead and give it a tape on the nose cone to the fuse, the foam, and the plastic, and just let that sit overnight. All right, don't touch it, don't move it. Just come back 24 hours later, uh, and it will be fine. Okay. So keep in mind, guys. Um, just going to give you some tips that helped me in the past and this is uh, an overall consensus I've gotten my information from guys that shown me a thing or two that helped them as well so just spreading the knowledge okay nobody's an expert everybody's learning including everybody and everybody <laughs> so um, just trying to share the knowledge here if you guys see anything you want to share or know have anything you want to share just just you know share in the comment box right open to constructive criticism everybody has their own way of doing things so over here we're i'm pointing at an area where i may cons uh, that not i may i will be putting the bungee hook in that area it's slightly back from where i'm showing right now it's probably maybe two to three inches back um i mean having it far forward like how i'm showing here is also going to work the problem with putting the bungee hook there is there's not much material foam material to mount the plywood plate or the balsa wood plate that serves as a foundation for the the hook that would protrude out at an angle for the bungee cord to to, to actuate and grab on um, to sling in the air so that'll be detailed in a future video all right so won't need to worry about that in this video i'll, I'll save it for um, part 10 or part 11 i'm not sure yet i haven't decided yet still got to create the videos for part 10 11 12 up to end um not exactly sure when the series will end but we're getting pretty close all right um the word of advice back to my point guys is keep the aircraft light this is a 850 millimeter wingspan model so um the way it's designed the airframe the thrust angle of the adf it's really optimized this thing is really well mannered but it just helps if you can remember to keep the model light okay keep the model light it just flies better um it gets you you can get out of trouble a lot easier you can land slower you can hand launch easier you can whatever launch easier you can bungee launch easier right the lighter the less uh the the, the less the wing loading all right and you won't have to fly so fast as to stay in the air but that doesn't mean you don't you you don't that doesn't mean you have to keep it underpowered you can you put all the power in there as you need you don't have to use all the power right just it the lighter airframe just makes everything better period so um in this case 
I think the pack, I'm, I'm going to set this up as a 50 millimeter uh, Dr. Mad Thrust EDF. The, the um, lipo I plan on using is a 4S2200. Okay. So that'll be more than enough to um, propel the 50 millimeter unit. And the 4S2200 isn't really that heavy either. And that also means be mindful about the components you guys are selecting, right? The stock servo, it's not your typical nine gram. It's probably like an eight gram or seven gram servo. I don't know, you have to look it up, but they're fairly small. I mean, everything adds up your receiver, your speed control. For example, you wouldn't want to put a really big speed control in here for a 64 millimeter unit. Um, and dimensionally, I mean, you could put an 80 amp speed control in here. Right. If, if they, if they, if the, um, the power consumption requires it, but when you're drawing like 30 amps, don't put an 80 amp unit in here. It's just a waste of ESC. It's a waste of all up weight, unnecessary, unnecessary all up weight. Just keep it optimized. If you're running 30, if you're drawing 30 amps, put a 35 amp in there. If you're running, you know, and, and so forth. Right. So just be conscious of the components that you are going to be retrofitting this plane with so that's the message i'm trying to send okay so over here we're looking at a um a static not really a static screen it looks like i'm preparing the vertical stab unfortunately um, i'm preparing it outside the view of window probably should have edited this part out but anyway um, I'm using Gorilla Glue to secure the vertical stab to the um, rear side of the aircraft because, because the vertical stab is a critical path, so it is a high stress point. Not the highest stress point, but it can be a high stress point, so you don't want it to fall off. If it falls off, you're pretty much done, right, uh, if you're flying, when you're flying. Um, there's another tip of advice I'd like to give you guys, and that is a, a clear type of Gorilla Glue that I like to use, um, especially on this airframe. Um, of course, this knowledge can be replicated or projected to most other airframes as well, but the clear type of Gorilla Glue uh, you can get from Home Depot or Harbor Freight, Lowe's, or any home improvement hardware shop that might be uh available to you will mostly most likely carry this type of gorilla glue it's a clear kind it does not ooze necessarily ooze like the brown gorilla glue and it would and it's as good as the brown kind that fills in gaps and can you know ooze through the seams and cracks um aggressively the clear kind is good for you know filling in lines um, that are sort of somewhat intermediate. So for example, if you have this line here, this panel line here between the vertical stab and the fuse, you can run a bead of that clear Gorilla Glue, right? And what that does is it'll make the two surfaces flush. There won't be any stepping if you run your hands through it. So. But anyway, that's just a tip. That's what I do. It just makes the finish a little better. It's kind of like a clear coat, if you will, when it dries and it stays that way. But over here, I'm pointing at the, the, the gap with my screwdriver, the seam. You can see there's a potential. If I let, if I don't do anything here, that Gorilla Glue will ooze out. If I leave it like that and I come back tomorrow, there's gonna be a clunk of Gorilla Glue hanging out and you're gonna, and I'm gonna we'll have to cut it off or remove it. The problem with that is, if you don't wipe it off right away before it cures, you let it sit, and when you remove it, it could take chunks of foam away from the airframe, right? So avoid doing that um, and wipe it off now. Uh, I don't think I'm demonstrating that here, but I'm saying it, right? I recommend you guys do that. So take a wet paper towel or wet tissue and run along that line and take out as much of that Gorilla Glue as possible. And then once that happens, 
run a piece of masking tape over it so none of it will really attempt to ooze um, ooze away so if you seal this whole thing up um, after cleaning it up with a wet towel then you'll be fine okay you'll be fine so there you go um, this is what uh, we're gonna do here and also for the the other side of the vertical stab, the right side of the vertical stab we're looking at right now. It has the same issue. So we'll be tending to that. And um, okay, so make sure um, the battery tray is actually uh, installed into the fuselage. As you can see here, um, I left that part out. So that's why I sort of had to remove the nose cone. Okay. So once that's uh, once that that uh, glue is actually applied, once the vertical stab is actually installed onto the uh, fuselage, uh, just you just want to make sure it's it's on there, and there won't be any weak points to to risk that the the vertical stab might come off. Okay, just make sure. Just make sure you're 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 gonna you're gonna be um, having a secure fit. And what I'm doing here, apparently, it looks like I'm running uh, something off to to clean off the excess glue. Is what it looks like here. So, and I'm applying the the used tape. This is not very sticky. It's been used uh, several times before, which is perfect for this purpose. You, you don't really need a brand new tape. Actually, a brand new tape might be too much because you you could pull some of the foam off too which is why i recommend using uh, masking tape right because masking tape by default isn't that strong anyways okay so right here just going around the vertical stabs vertical uh stab uh, where it meets the fuselage and just going around with tape and just uh, make sure you wrap the whole thing that the seam part the idea is just to keep the Gorilla Glue from oozing out because as it dries it's going to exhibit a characteristic of going outward. It wants to, it's like water. You have a leak in your house, water will find the lowest point, right? It'll find the lowest point. So if, if in like an old basement in an old house, water leaks in, it's going to be in the lowest point of the basement. Same thing here. The Gorilla Glue, as it dries, it's going to find the the, ease, the less resistance escape route. So <clears throat> if there's a crack that you're not aware of, um, it's going to lose out of there, right, as it dries. So it looks like we're finished uh, with one side, the right side, and we're going to do the left side, which is uh, pointed to towards us, um, towards the bottom of the screen. So, just gotta get some tape cut out or use tape floating around and um, give it a nice seal. And this is just to retain all the glue that's in uh, the assembly now. So that's, that's what you want. When it hardens, you want as much glue, the volume, in the structure looking neatly and not oozing out okay so this is what makes a uh, model airplane strong right this is what makes this airframe strong you want to make sure you use the correct uh, adhesive for this particular job and is what I recommend but I know some of you guys have a preference of your own type of adhesive, and that's perfectly fine too. Some guys like using epoxy, and some guys like using the popular foam tack. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is what I do, and this is, this is what works for me. So that, I mean, that foam tack just, it's quite expensive, right? It's pretty expensive, and there's not much of it in one package. But Gorilla Glue, there's plenty of it and you don't need that much to get the job done. So it's a matter of uh, economics. <laughs> okay, so what's the next step here? Um, it looks like uh, we're getting 
close to uh, tidying the last bits and pieces here and um, we'll make sure uh, if you guys have any questions okay any comments just once again uh, leave a comment below uh, and if you have any suggestions also leave that below in the comment section hit the like button and let me know what you guys think uh, what you guys would like to see in future videos as well how the way I'm presenting things if there's constructive criticism I'm really open to it okay and um, and hopefully uh, this part nine of the DFO 32 build series has helped you guys out quite a bit and in uh, having an understanding of how a foam plane fits together with glue okay this is not a modern foam kit this kit has been around for 20 years so um, the newer kits you could probably get from Banggood or Hobby King or Horizon Hobby or whatever even offshore um, they're they come with screws and very little involvement with screws uh, with glue but but more often times it's just like two screws you screw the wings on and it's done so for example like the the zod alpha striker and that barely requires any screw right any glue uh, but it has two screws <laughs> it's like a tongue twister so anyway um it looks like we're wrapping it up here fairly close uh to the end and um just let this sit overnight. Don't rush through it, guys. Let it sit overnight and come back to it tomorrow. You can always work on a wing if you want. So for example, we started with the wing at the beginning of the video. You could um, maybe work on a, uh, and I'll have a video, probably part uh, part 10. I'll, I'll show you guys what I did with the control surfaces. And um, maybe that's self-explanatory. So. I might leave that out um, but anyway just go ahead and make sure um, you let it cure overnight before uh, continuing with the fuse wash right and um, you could try to work on something else maybe you know program the electronic speed controller you plan on using or right, anything besides you know fiddling with the fuse lodge and just curing so thanks for watching guys okay so once that's uh, once that that uh, glue is actually applied, once the vertical stab is actually installed onto the uh, fuselage, uh, just you just want to make sure it's it's on there, and there won't be any weak points to 